thanks for gathering here. Um, final tally in the trade season is um, adding Ilya Labushkin, Mark Giordano, Colin, ba- uh, Colin Blackwell, Carter Hutton, and a third in 2022 with uh, Nick Ritchie, Travis Dermott, second, second, third, and third uh, going out. So um, that's, uh, that's how we'll roll the rest of the year. Obviously excited uh, about the prospects of the rest of the year with our club and where we've come throughout the season. We've also got uh, Rasmus Sandin going on injured reserve with a knee injury today. So um, it's too bad for him. Um, obviously, an excellent young player for us. Uh, would have been a valuable uh, stretch run for him, but uh, he'll be out with, uh, with a knee injury uh, for the foreseeable future. And we'll update that as we know more uh, later on during the week during Sheldon's availabilities and such or, or through the uh, media relations team. So having said that, I'll turn it over to everybody for questions. How much did the, the Rasmus injury sort of affect what you did? Uh, with Jordano? With Jordano or maybe did you consider keeping Travis or like anything like that? Uh, no. Um, it, it, uh, the, the Sandine injury was... Um, those other two moves were already well in, in motion. So we got word of that. Um, we got word of his uh, results uh, following the the, uh, the trade calls there uh, yesterday or right in between. It was quite a hectic afternoon. So when exactly we got the uh, results of the scan on his knee, uh, I'm not exactly sure, but those two trades were, were rolling uh, prior to that. What excites you most about Mark Giordano bringing him to the group? Uh, I think the the quality of player he uh, he still is, um, you know, is is the the most exciting part of it for us, Luke. He, um, you know, just in watching him throughout the year, we played against him a lot last year, obviously with uh, with the division being what it was in in Canada, and uh, and then watching him this year uh, with Seattle, a variety of different partners that they had him with, um, just still feel like he's got a lot left uh, to give as a as a player. I think um, his intelligence with the puck, his ability to move the puck up the ice, his ability to defend, and then um, that's first and foremost. He's still a very quality player in the league. And then secondly, um, just his competitiveness uh, and the way he defends and and his ability to play against uh, good players still and play both special teams and be versatile uh, was really important to us. So we're excited about that. All the subjective uh, leadership experience, competitive stuff is is important. But first and foremost, we brought him in because we think he's a very good player and going to help us a lot as a hockey team. Did you feel more pressure or more willingness to get over the line knowing what the rest of the division had done? And what did you make what the rest of the division had done sort of in the 20, 48 hours before that? Yeah, we, we had our plan going in. And, and certainly you, you can you, you go into every trade and you think, or every every season, every trade that you're competing against those other teams. And you expect every team is going to do all they can to improve themselves. Uh, everything we did was just to abide by the plan that we had uh, going in and, and not be too reactive and not feel that because other teams were spending uh, more or, or evaluating players differently that we had to react to that. So just stick with our plan and roll, and, and we feel we stack up well against those clubs. Uh, a couple of weeks ago you talked about your goaltending and you had faith in them. Uh, it's still been kind of rocky. Does the, the fact what you've done or, or didn't do show faith that you think that you can get Jack back up to the level that he's shown in the past? Well, Jack's always done that. I mean, Jack, uh, it's its not always been a, a straight path for Jack Campbell. You know, he's gone from being a star player at 16-17 for the U.S. Uh, World Junior Team, struggling in uh, the OHL, struggling to find it as a pro. And the one thing about him is he always finds a way to to bounce back. He's a competitor, and I think he thrives when, when there's doubts, and he thrives when things get rocky. And for me, being a goaltender here in Toronto, you have to have that quality, and he has it. And um, I think that the injury with him may have come at a, you never want a player to get injured, but I think it may come at a very positive time for him to get, get back working on his game, get things stabilized, and, uh, and get uh, ready to roll for the stretcher in the playoffs. So it was good to see him back on the ice the last few days, and, and uh, I wasn't there today, obviously, but I saw him at the beginning when he first was on with Steve, and uh, looks like he's getting close, so we're excited for that and excited the way that uh, Eric Shelgren has stepped up here in the, in the interim, and, and um, you know, it, it's, it's been a, a positive week on that front for us. Peter, what was the conversation like with uh, Peter Mrazek when you told him he had to go on waivers? Yeah, those are never fun conversations. I think the thing about Peter that uh, that's most impressive is that regardless of what anyone says or or, or um, the way that things are going, he has a strong belief in himself. And it's not a arrogant uh, way or anything like that. He's just he's been a good goalie in the league for a long time. And if his confidence was starting to waver or his belief was starting to waver, I'd be really concerned. But... Uh, he's just got to continue, as I think as Sheldon said today, uh, he's just got to continue to come and work and 
find his game, get better, and, and nobody wants to do that more than Peter. So obviously it was it was done for for salary cap reasons and and just to give us the greatest flexibility possible. I hate to do that to anybody, but you, you have to do what you have to do to give the team the best chance to be as flexible as possible and have different players return during the year, and so that's why we did it. How did you, you, you sign this guy for you know, two, three years of nearly $4 million. I mean, how surprised and disappointed is it like how, how his season has gone up to now? Injuries aside, it just hasn't looked like himself. Yeah, I, I think that uh, you, when whenever you make any decision on any player, it comes with the risk that it's not going to be... I, I'd love for them all to come in and play at their best every single game, and they all look... Uh, they all look like brilliant signings, trades, draft picks, but it's unfortunately in, in this business that we've chosen, it's not the way it goes. And I think the onus comes on to, on to me to set the tone in the organization to help him get back to where he needs to be. If he had no record or a very sh short sample size of being a quality goalie in the league, I'd be more concerned. The other thing that uh, keeps me optimistic about Peter is that uh, he's been able to come through stretches like this in his career before and bounce back. And like I said, same thing with Jack. I think especially playing here in a market like this where there's a greater amount of scrutiny um, and and a greater amount of attention paid to it, that having that confidence that you've gone through something like this before and come through it is, is vital, and he has. So now it's just about putting the work in and finding himself, and, and I think he will. How seriously did you explore the goalie market? And then once Sateri got claimed by Arizona, did you revisit in the last hour here a little bit? I mean, we're always, every position, not just goalie, goalie forwards, defense, everything, we're, we're always trying to explore and see if there's any way that we can improve our, our roster, which we, which we really like. But um, we felt the best path to go for was to try to, you know, sign Sateri after his season had ended in the KHL um, and then take our chances with waivers today. If not, you know, we've got the goaltenders down in the American League and, and in the system that we have belief in. So it uh, didn't work out, much like a lot of the players we put on waivers. I think we we lead the league here by, I think, double uh, since uh, 2018 in the fall. We've had 11 guys claimed, which I think is double. So it's a good advertisement for agents. If you want your players to come to a place where they're going to get lots of attention and get claimed in the summer, probably a feather in our cap, but it hurts on moments like this or others when you have guys claim. But, um, you know, we just didn't feel there was anything out there that uh, for the for the prices paid that was going to make a, a, make it worthwhile for us and um, make it work salary-wise for us. How far down the road did you get on getting Flurry from Chicago? I, I mean, I'm, I'm disappointed that that conversation is public. It's not, I'm not criticizing you. I just, I've never had that before where... Um, these specifics like that have been made public, and I think, frankly, it's probably a conversation to ask Kyle Davidson on his availability in Chicago. Kyle, what gives you faith that your team will match up well against your division rivals? I think the way that we've played throughout the year, Mark, uh, gives me faith. I think the way that we played last week, I think, you know, I, I understand, you know, that it's uh, there are ups and downs in a season and, and things happen. Um, but to me, the, the key thing that, about our team is that we've been a good team the whole season. We've had our ups and downs. But, you know, as we went into the weekend, you're fifth place in the league. And, and um, you know, I know that the division it looks uh, ominous. But I think that level of competition is, is, um, is great because, it, you, know, you're gonna, you know, who you're going up against every single night. You've got, you know, you've got Tampa, Florida, Boston, ourselves that are sort of the, the four that have separated themselves from the pack this season. Um, and you have teams that are pushing to come and join that. We've had a tough time with Buffalo. We've had interesting games with Detroit, and they've got a great young group of players. Ottawa's coming along as well, uh, and then and Montreal is uh, they're, they're starting fresh, and they'll be quick to turn it. So, I think you know the division is very difficult, and I think for us that's the best thing for us. It'd be great if it was easy, but I think uh, how big of a challenge it is forces our group in the final stretch to. Uh, get our game into order and you know we'd had a, a, that you know really the, those games against you know non-playoff teams that we spoke about I think it was at the press conference before the uh, Heritage Classic where um, you know we needed to be better against those teams and not leave points on the table and then we came back last week against Dallas and we, and we didn't play well and then we came back against Dallas and Carolina I think especially the Carolina game you know even without Austin no Muzz uh, no Campbell no Mrazek and we're, we show what we're able to do as a team um, and how we played defensively, how we checked, how we capitalized and, and made life tough for them and how we competed. So those nights like that and, you know, really if you take the whole the season as a whole and the way that we played and everything underlying about the team and what it says is what makes me feel confident. And we have some of the top players uh, in the league on our, on our team every night. And, uh, you know, those guys have become more and more competitive. They've become great two-way players in addition to just scoring. And, 
Um, sometimes that gets lost in the ups and downs of the year, but that's what we come in with every night. And I think the, the way that those players have matured, Austin, Mitch, William, Morgan, then you add a Giordano and, and Blackwell to it, just in terms of the competitiveness of the group, is, is, uh, is what makes me excited about the next stretch into the playoffs. How about How you to signing any of your like, HL only guys with deadline signings? We, we didn't want to use up our uh, we didn't want to use up our um, our contract slots just to save them for the potential college players that we have, David. So we thought about it, and and um, we don't we don't have a whole lot of uh, slots there. So whether it's free agents in college or, or our own college free agents and we've got to we'll see how they how they do here in, in the weekend in the tournament but we wanted to make sure we've got some potential space for them so we didn't want to burn the slots on uh, on any of the AHL guys unfortunately how important was it for you to get through this not just adding as you have but to maintain that first round pick and to maintain all of your top prospects uh, i think I, I think that we uh, you know, it's it's nice, but if there were moves that came along that would have made us better in the, in the long run, and not just as rentals that we you know and any we would consider anything, but certain more so the prospects than the picks, Kevin were were important for us to keep, and we didn't we didn't want to take away from our you know our, our group of A list prospects because un, un, we've had already you know one very unfortunate health situation with one of those players this year, so um, you know that. You know, on the hockey side, on the human side of it, you know, I think everyone knows how I feel about it. But on the hockey side of it, I think it just makes it further uh, more difficult to deplete that uh, that group. How would you assess the? Oh, go ahead, Lance. Sorry, I was going to say uh, both Sheldon and a couple of players were uh, uh, encouraged about to Blackwell uh, mm -hmm. to be an underrated, under, under the radar guy. What was your thinking there? We tried to get him a few times in free agency, and it just didn't go our way. Um, to me. I think he can his versatility. He can play both wings, but he can also play both special teams and play up and down the lineup. But to me, the thing that's really impressed over his last number of NHL stints uh, in the Rangers, and then obviously more so with Seattle this year, especially uh, just his tenacity and how hard he plays every single every single game. That was uh, that was the thing that jumped out, especially when they moved him onto the penalty kill this year, and he showed his value there. Um, and the other part is that it's not, he's not just a pure energy run around four check pressure player. He can also make a lot of plays and he showed that, I mean, it was too bad that he showed it against us early in the year and we were kind of hoping it would fly into the radar, but, um, you know, he's got that component that I think lets us move him up and down the lineup. So we're really excited about him. He's, he's not tall, but a very strong, um, you know, winger with, with great speed and, and tenacity. So we're excited. And follow up, uh, toughness in the playoffs, I kind of think. Is that, you know, I guess there's not going to be a trade for a real large, bulky, power <laughs> forward winger anymore, but. No, no, no. no there's not. Yeah. And that has to be organically drawn, is a term I think you guys use a lot. Here. I think that our, our top players have shown that. I mean, you know, throughout the season, I, I you know, I, I just the game on Thursday against Carolina, I, I just to, too specifically, I let Mitch Marner and Ilya Mikheyev. And just in terms of their physicality in a game that required it like that, Lance, I thought both of them show that. And there's been a number of different examples. That's just the most recent one that jumps to mind for for me uh, with our guys showing the way that they're going to have to play at those times. And I think if our best players uh, lead the way in, as they have in that continued growth and that element, the physicality, the competitiveness every night, everyone else on the team has to go with it. And if those guys are playing that way, I think that's what you know as we've seen from other teams in the playoffs. That's what makes life hard on the opponent is when the best players are the ones that are the most competitive and our guys are, are continuing to develop that. No, nobody has that uh, right away at, at that level of player. So that's been the most encouraging part for me. Um, you know, Blackwell, we wanted to add for that part. We brought Clifford back during the year for that part. We have Wayne Simmons here. So all of those, uh, those, those types of players are, are important to us. Um, and I think our best players and all guys all throughout our lineup Taking that step is is equally as important, if not more. Austin's approaching fifty. Austin's approaching fifty. How big a deal would that be for the team for for morale to see him finally get that number up and coach sort of robbed them for the last two years? Probably a better question for the for the guy. I mean, yeah, I guess that's that's true. He has been robbed of it, but um, it's probably a better question for the players. I think that our guys are are great. I think in celebrating the accomplishments of the other players on the team all the time, Kevin. So I assume it will be a. A big deal um, and a great deal for our fans as well to know that we have a player of that uh, that caliber and, and that stature within the league and you know he's obviously um, up for a, a number of awards right now and as, as should a number of guys on our team so having that 
caliber of players uh, is, is great for us, and especially with how he's playing on both ends of the rink and his value to us and his value throughout the league. How is it nice and average easy maybe joining at some point? Well, we, that's, we've got to go. they, they have bigger uh, fish to fry than, than signing with us right now yet, Jonas, but you know, we just wanted to keep that option open. I, we don't want to put any pressure on either, but neither is a senior. So, and both play at great programs at uh, at Minnesota, in Nice's case, in Harvard, in in Abrazizi's case. So, um, we uh, we want to be fully respective of their programs. We just wanted to stay flexible in case they are are willing to at least entertain it. We didn't want to uh, go to that part of the season, or you know, however long that process takes for each of these players. And then not have the ability to bring them in because we think a lot of them both as prospects. So, um, I mean, no pressure from our end if both of them decide they're going to go back. If they're at Harvard, Minnesota, and the, just working with those programs. And in Nice's case this season, but in Abrazizi's case, the last couple uh, has been a pleasure for us. Both great programs for hockey development. And I mean, obviously Harvard's Harvard, so that's a tough one to fight against. I was thinking of that Jake Muzzin's going to get in some regular season games. Very, yeah. And that was part of our whole strategy uh, this week. And, and one of the things that, that guided us, Luke, we, we wanted to ensure that if Jake was able and, and ready to come back, um, that we had the ability for him to do so. We didn't want to, you know, get it to the playoffs or anything like that. I, I think it would, be, it would be unfair to a player of his caliber and the way that he plays to just tell him, you know, we, we don't have the space or whatever. You, know, you guys know all the stuff that that uh, happens in that regard. So um, we thought it was important to maintain that space and maintain the flexibility. That was a lot of the waiver stuff yesterday, and the various things that we did or didn't do was directed at you know when you talk about additions at the trade deadline. You have a guy in Jake Muzzin who's been an excellent player for us and in the league for a long time. He's obviously had two uh, serious injuries. Um, so especially with that on the go, I, I just don't think a conditioning stint with the Marlies would be good enough to for him to find his form. He's working his butt off every day on the ice and off and, and um, trying to get the clearance to get healthy. He's been in practice a number of times now in non-contact. He'll have to take that next step, and then we'll determine will he go to the Marlies or not as long as he doesn't have any setbacks. But uh, very encouraging with him and looks good on the ice. He's been able to put in a lot of time with the development staff and um, adding him uh, as well as Giordano and Labushkin from the previous time when, when he was hurt. I think would be it's it's a very different look for us on the back end and, and one that that we really like and uh, we're, we'd be really excited about going into the playoffs. Kyle, in your discussions with Seattle and we talked to Mark yesterday, how important was it, you know, or how did it make it easier that he he stated yesterday he wanted to come home? And you've got we've talked about this before, but you got all these GTA and Ontario guys in there. Do you think that gives them a boost, or do you think it 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 put it intensifies the spotlight on them? Uh. I'm not sure. I think we've had cases where it's worked out and cases where it where it hasn't. Uh, as eyes, um, I th I think in a veteran player like Mark's case, um, I, I mean, to me, he seems to be a very. I don't know him overly well. I spoke to him yesterday for the first time uh, ever. So um, to me, it seems to have its advantages. Um, he's playing for a lot, wants to win. Um, still has a lot left in a tank and a lot left to give, and I think can give a lot in our locker room, can give us a lot on the ice. So, um, you know, I, as to how it affects different players, when I remember when we first started here, there was a narrative that local players didn't want to play here. They didn't want to come here. The, the scrutiny and the pressure was too much on them and their family, and I think one of the, the great things that's happened here over, uh, I can only speak to my time, is that I think that narrative has been soundly defeated and that a lot of local players want to come and play here, and I think they find it to be a great place for their families and and um, and the, that the community is, is very supportive. There's moments like in any place or any business or any walk of life where it probably doesn't go as well as you want, but um, I, I think the, the positive is we've got lots of players from the area that, that love it and enjoy playing here, so that's been a real positive, not only for the Maple Leafs, but for the city to have those people who are from the area want to be here. Well, after uh, the Labushkin trade, you mentioned that you didn't like the yo-yo effect on Nick Robertson in the previous couple of years. What was the thought process with him the last stretch? Uh, I think we wanted to get him up and get him into a, a, a large set of games and see where he was. See where he was at. We knew at the deadline today we would have to flip him back for the NHL transaction purposes, Mark, so that he was papered down and onto the Marlies and eligible for them for the playoffs. So when he didn't play on Saturday night, just viewed it as a great chance to have him come in and play yesterday um, for the Marlies, uh, which he had a great he played a great game for them. Great chance, great goal. And so for, for us, it's just about continuing to see the growth. We had an opportunity over a decent stretch for him to come in and be able to see him 
play and, and give him the chance to be at his best and and um, was impressed with him again it didn't didn't necessarily uh, go in all the time for him and he created he also created more chances I felt this time than any previous time up and uh, they just didn't didn't go in the net so the the stat line doesn't look great but I think he continues to show progress and continues to improve and continues to develop and um, you know that's where we're very happy with with where he's at right now and I think could take some real positives you always worry when you send a player down how do they react when they're down there I've done that job where you receive the players and they're unhappy to be there and he went yesterday and was turned in a great performance for for the Marlies and they've got a they have a whack of games here coming up so um, it'll be another you know take what he learned here Sheldon was very specific with him and where he wants him to work and then get rolling